Alright, let's talk about memory. Let's go down the path of memory lane. Maybe I can jog your memory a little bit. That word, mem, mem ori. Where does memory think about how water retains memory, how it can be, how it is transformed through emotions, intent, how it can retain those things, how it can retain all things, and then reflect back to us what we are holding true inside. Once once we become the observer, it's going to reflect and hold a memory as well. Ori. Orin. One of the things you will notice when you start drinking more of your Orin is the effects on your mind, on your memory. That will be an immediate effect that you'll notice. Uh, the immediate clarity in the mind. And the more you keep doing it, the clearer you get. The, the less mucky the waters are. So your inner pool, the waters in your mind become clear like a pond that's been cleaned and cleared of the moss. It's crisp and pure. It doesn't have bullshit pollutants being sewage being dumped into it. It's pristine. And it's, and it's calm, as ponds typically are. So when we think of mem ori, Water and light, light within water. There is a, in Greek mythology, there is a Titanus named Nemo, Nemosine, Nemosine, spelled M N E M O S Y N E. She was the daughter of Earth and Sky. And with Zeus, laid with Zeus for nine nights and gave birth to the Muses. And according to the lore, anyone who drank from the waters of Nemocene uh, remembered all drink from the memory. And then there was also the waters of L-E-T-H-E, -E. I'm not for sure how that's pronounced, Leith. The waters of forgetfulness. And I've read different things about this. That 
a person was led to the waters of Laish to forget and then led to the waters of Nemocene to remember. And this you know, instantly reminded me of you having to empty one's cup before we can begin to, f begin to fill it back up with things of uh, truth and quality instead of BS and belief systems. And then another thing said, Nimozine also ruled over a pool in Hades, connected to the river Lath. The dead would drink from the river Lath, so that they would not remember a previous life once they were reincarnated. However, initiates were encouraged to drink from Nimozine's pool when they died, instead of drinking from Lath. Which is interesting. And then Nemozine is also connected with the word uh, mnemonics, which are kind of uh, little little tricks or techniques to remember things. So, speaking of mnemonic. A nice movie to watch, Mr. Matrix, uh, Johnny Mnemonic would be one I would recommend with the whole memory theme. As well as uh, the Total Recall movies, those, those kinds of movies have always touched upon something inside of me, some kind of like remembrance or deja vu, you could say. Uri in the blind forest. The memory does become a blind forest when we have forgotten how to use our minds. When it's all cluttered. And filled with gunk and sewage and BS. Then our memory becomes less and less. And also a word connected with it would be meme. And we have all these memes nowadays. And if you haven't noticed the direction the technology is taking people or the effect that is having upon people, especially the young people who, of course, are going to eat it right up. It's, it's very um, fast-paced, uh, in the moment, which, which isn't in and of itself a bad thing, but because it's always to the next thing, to the next thing, 
with all these memes and all these quick thoughts and quick ideas and shortened versions of things and shortened ways to abbreviations and ways to text or type or speak even moving to into emoticons which actually is, is something that, that helps because it's of visual nature and within a picture lies many words and ideas and concepts but this technology is just just like our system of indoctrination that we have to go through it is a direct attack on our memory systems because it encourages us it reinforces the idea that we have to memorize things on the short term often things that are arbitrary and a lot of times it's just not true theories we have to memorize them for tests and then later in life we usually get nothing from that but what that does over and over the repetition of this it in entraps and entrains the mind to think a certain way to shorten memories and attention spans from going one one subject to the other to the other and just having to stay on the surface level of things and not ever really having time to dive deeper into the subjects or investigate things for yourself because because the te you, you took the test so you're done with that subject so it's on to the next and then on to the next you see how this works <laughs> Is a Warfic Hymn seventy seven to what Nimuzin? To Nimuzin, fumigation from frankincense, the consort I invoke of Zeus divine, source of the holy. Sweetly speaking, Nusai Nine, free from the oblivion of the fallen mind, by whom the soul with intellect is joined, reasons increase, and thought to thee belong, all powerful, pleasant, vigilant, and strong. Tis thine to awaken from lethargic rest, all thoughts deposited within the breast, and not neglecting, vigorous to excite the mental eye from dark oblivion's night. Come, blessed power, thy mystic's memory wake to holy rites and lifts fetters break. So that was kind of cool. And it also made me think about um, the memory in uh, the mother's milk. how important that is and how that is a huge uh, one of the many ways in which uh, the attack on um, truth the attack on humanity uh, the degradation that we've plummeted down um, is taking the connection away from uh, breaking the family connection first and foremost and then slowly confusing people more and more so that they don't even know what they are they don't even know what male and female is anymore but one of these 
degradations has been disconnecting um, natural breastfeeding and the importance of that. Not 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 only just the act of in and of itself, but the the, the feelings that are engaged. It, whenever that happens, and obviously I'm in a male form in this here and now, but breastfeeding should be. Um, Pretty much the most uh, intimate meditation and blissful experience. Um, that two people can have. Besides uh, uniting within ecstatic uh, blissed out states. Or co-creating together a new being. A new vessel that a spirit can inhabit. So when we think of memory in terms of a human memory, we think of the mind, we think of maybe the brain, and especially if you go into science or, or, or you, you listen to science, they're going to have you think certain, certain beliefs about what memory is, because they have an answer for everything, of course. Not to discredit the scientific method, but whenever you don't, whenever you take have cocked ideas and theories and present that as fact and truth and then spread that out into the world well we become uh, more and more dumbed down numbed up uh, robots robot people so With memory, there's, we, we, you, know, there's, you can call it short-term memory, and that's just kind of how everyone operates in that, and it's because of the indoctrination systems that we've went through. Uh, we are encouraged to engage upon and stay within that surface level memory and not dive down deep, because if you go down too deep, you might go down the rabbit hole and pop out the other side inside of an insane asylum. People will think you are crazy if you do things like meditate by yourself for long periods of time in nature. That's not normal. To unnormal, unnatural people. And the, the deep memory, the deep well memory that's going to be accessed whenever you disengage from that quick thinking, that monkey mind. One of the things that you can engage with during a meditation, because whenever, whenever someone's meditating, they can be doing so many different things. Just because on the outside you see someone sitting there, being still, with their eyes closed. That doesn't mean that they are right there. They could be doing so many different things. They could be anywhere and everywhere at once. Especially if they realize that they are that at all times.
but the deep well memory is going to be a little bit more difficult to access because we're not used to engaging that. We're not used to spending time with ourselves, with the, our true essence, with being still, being vulnerable, and facing that. We're, we're not used. Most people aren't used to facing themselves, and and truthfully. Most people spend their entire lives running away from themselves because it's part of the process in remembering, remembering, repiecing all the pieces of yourself that you have forgotten were there. You're going to realize the things that you have done to yourself and things that you have allowed to happen, and it, there's going to be a release that needs to happen, and this is good to let that, to allow this experience to happen, I've talked about it in my other, one of my other videos, um, probably in my meditation video, and allowing yourself to be vulnerable, to have that experience and have that release, and this can be likened to emptying one's cup. And it does feel very renewing whenever we can do this, have that release, have that good cry, or deep, deep feeling. And it doesn't have to be a sad cry, it can be an overwhelming, happy cry, a cry of jubilation. But the more time you spend In stillness, disengaging that monkey mind, that short-term memory, the service level bullshit that we're so used to being on and operating from, because everyone is doing that. The more you're going to start to have experiences where you feel, where you remember certain things and some people will say they remember past lives and I'm not saying they don't but it's, it's very it's very hard to say for sure what we are experiencing even because we have to siphon it into these words and then everything can get mixed up and construed and confused and then we're just arguing and bickering about what someone actually meant instead of the true essence, the true intent, which was there. And building from that foundation. So past lives, I would recommend not getting too caught up in, well, in anything really, but with this, and I'm not saying don't engage it, don't, don't, allow, allow your curiosity to guide you, uh, just go with the feeling, I mean, if, if you're pulled somewhere with your feelings, and where you, where you think, you, where you feel that you should go, or if something feels right, like, investigate, do that, dig it, dig into those places. But with my personal experience, I will say that with, with in talking about past lives, um, I would say that the most benefit that you're going to get as far as what you can bring back and pull from and draw from for your current life is going to look at um, your most recent past life. And observe that because then you're going to see the tendencies and the patterns and behaviors that you're most likely going to repeat during the, this this life and then beyond that um, well you can go as far back as you want and you can go as far back as the origin point 
in which everyone comes from that. And then we have this concept of Akasha, Akashic Record, Record. And this too is something that you're not going to be able to comprehend. I mean, you can read words about what the Akashic Record is or whatever and kind of uh, grasp it a little bit. Like, oh, okay, it's a place where all memories are. Hmm. I guess this kind of sounds like uh, something that could be fairy tale. But when you have certain experiences with deep meditation, with working with guides or entheogens or plant medicines or certain spirits, you will have, you can potentially have certain experiences where you access something that is likened to in Akasha or Akashic Record. And this is something that really only people who have engaged within with these things are going to, uh, it's going to ring true or hit home. <laughs> because whenever you access these things and work with the certain things, you go into certain modes and you're not necessarily under the influence of something as much as one aspect of yourself is being pronounced over the other aspects. So while you're in that place you're going to have certain memories and feelings and emotions and access. You're going to have certain access to things within yourself. But after, if you want to call it the come down or you start to return to homeostasis, those feelings uh, kind of dissipate a little bit as well as the memory of that experience and the memory that you had while in that experience. Which for me, whenever I first started engaging with, with some of this, these things, immediately, uh, it was in, intuitively, even though like, you know, a lot of people are going to misuse things of this nature or imprint their behaviors upon that thing. Uh, make it a party drug or a party thing. Which, when you do that, you are missing out on the lessons the message, which is, hey, these things are within you, they've always been within you, you just forgot how to access them, so let's go there for a little bit, and when you come back, you can start to work on getting there yourself. And this is where things like certain practices come in, like pranayama, breath work, yoga practices, just dedicating yourself to certain things, being disciplined in the mind and body. The more you do this, these things, 
the more you're going to be able to access those places that you are shown that were within you all along. So this is one of the ways to access these deep well memories. And also the deeper you go into this, you may find that there are barriers. And these barriers, most of them have been set up by yourself. Some of them have been set up as a safeguard. Some of them have been set up so that you don't go too far because if that happens and you remember everything, well, you're not going to be a very good slave anymore, so we, we can't have that. And if you think about your memories and how they're tied in with emotions, whenever we've had ecstatic emotions, or even emotions on both ends of the spectrum, light and dark, the memory seems to attach itself to those experiences more. You, they're imprinted upon you. You imprint your mind with those feelings. And so it's easier to call upon those memories by remembering the feelings. And it's the same with the uh, smell taste. These things can very much be beneficial tools and aids. So there are many techniques or practices that can encourage diving a little bit deeper into memory. And the main thing is, if you're interested with increasing your memory as well as Accessing deeper parts of yourself, let's say a cellular memory. A good place to start is to continuously practice stilling your mind. Whenever you're just skimming upon the surface of the pond, like a pebble, that's kind of where everyone's at. With the surface level bullshit, they're just pebbles skipping along the surface of the pond. But whenever you can stop doing that and allow the pebble to sink, then you can go deeper into your waters of your mind and your memory. Um, diving into dream work, keeping a dream journal, this is a good place to start accessing the memories of your dreams. Getting used to engaging that again, the more and more you do this, the easier it will become to remember not only just your memories of your dream life, your dream experiences, but also your waking life experiences as well. And sun gazing, actually. Sun gazing and a flame gazing. And then after you do that for a while, close your eyes and maybe even put your hands over your eyes and allow that image that has kind of been burned into your mind right there. You, 
It's a little bit like a meditation. It's a focus. Allow it to present itself to you. Allow it to become clearer. And you have to still your eyes and your mind's eye. And the more that you do that, it will kind of expand. It will also become very bright, brilliantly bright and clear. This is a really good practice in engaging that, engaging the mind, stilling the mind, engaging that focus, which is going to translate into other aspects of your life. Well, I think that's about it. Um, there are many ways to help jog your memory. And among the most powerful ways that I have experienced for me have been continuing to go deep inside. And it, it's going to be painful because the truth is painful whenever you realize what the truth of how we got to how things are now. It is painful, but don't get stuck there. Keep going. In all things in life, keep going. Don't don't stop there. Yes, you've discovered a new aspect or a new truth and uh, it's exciting and uh, it's good, but don't stop there. Don't allow your mind to become boxed. Go into the nature. Listen. Remember how to listen to your inner and outer nature and just be still. Spend time in water. Keep some water to where you can send your energy and focus and love to that water and drink that water and allow that memory to go into your waters of your body and your mind. Allow the ori, the orin, to do its work to help continue to clean and clear. Continue the path. Continue the remembrance of who you are, of who we all are. 